Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over how to do the blue spring mod on my early 04 F250. So for those of you guys that don't know, this has an 03 style motor in it. And uh, basically what the blue spring mod does is it increases your, your fuel pressure. So what was happening is the original spring, which is in your fuel bowl back here, I'll get you a better shot of that was weakening over time and PSI was dropping below. I think they quote like 41 is like the minimum they want before you can start seeing injector damage. And I think optimum's like somewhere in the 60 range, uh, give or take. There's numbers are all over the internet so you can look that up. But the blue spring mod is supposed to increase PSI uh, up. I've heard people quote as high as 70, an average of like 65. But so you want your pressure to be up there a little bit. So. I'm gonna go over how to do that. Uh, at the end, we're gonna kind of recap uh, everything. I did, did another video, but I goofed something up, so I'm gonna let you know what I did so you guys don't make the same mistake. Thank you. Okay, guys, I'm gonna overview uh, what needs to come out of the truck to uh, do this. So you're not trying to waste your time making shortcuts. It's quicker just to take what you need out. Um, so on my truck here, I have a SNB intake and this needs to come out and i found the best way to do this is to disconnect down here at the turbo hopefully that comes up on camera there uh disconnect down a boot down here at the turbo i loosen this boot and then i kind of wiggle this out there's also two bolts right here that need to come out and you want to loose, take this glass off and loosen up your air filter so you can get this big long tube out of here. Now, I when I did this the first time, I am not sure if I uh, needed to take my degas bottle out. I did loosen it up so I could move it around. I'm going to attempt not to have to do that. But uh, at the end of the day, if I need to, I'm just going to take it out it's real quick. It's two bolts and done. We'll also be loosening up this connection here and uh well let's see i think that's everything i might take this guy off not a hundred percent sure there but uh you know we'll we'll get back to that and i'll update you guys as we go so just to recap here two bolts back of the intake on my snb uh on the ford one i believe it's just a couple clips it's not as uh it, it's not this style so i think there's just like uh, two or three clips in the back and front and then you can start ripping that out uh, This tube still needs to come out on that style And your mass flow air sensor needs disconnected. So I'll get back to you guys shortly Okay guys, welcome back here. I'm gonna update you here what I got going on So as you can see here, we removed the air uh, the filter that's in here in this glass piece up here just these four screws uh, if you have the glass piece installed and one screw that clamps down the air filter to this tube back here so i loosened this up got it out i did have to loosen my degas bottle a little bit removed the mass airflow sensor which is just connected to your engine oil tube that's hanging down there i loosened up this clamp here so we can start loosening that disconnected these two hoses as you can see, I loosened up right here. Let me get a light here. See if we can show this a little better than I am. <clears throat> so, here we have that. I loosened up this connector here. And then back here, that looks like showing up a little better. I loosened up just the, just the, plastic piece from the boot not the boot from the turbo and then now this stuff will all start coming semi easily out that's your crankcase vent system there this tube is always fun to get out it's not terrible truth be told just i'm being a little whiny because i already did this job once and then down here, if you guys can see it, there's this uh, little plastic piece. This is the filter minder for the stock filter. 
disconnect that. And then this comes right out too. So anyway, uh, well, I guess I'll show you what I'm gonna do next here. Uh, this boot down here, you wanna, dis you wanna loosen up the clamp that connects to the intercooler. And then uh, we're just gonna give this pipe a turn out of the way. And uh, once I get that done, I'll come back and we'll uh, go from there. Okay guys, here you can see, all I did is this hose is still connected. All I did is I just turn it. So, you know, be careful of your um, engine oil dipstick here. But so here it is kind of in place and I just pull it up towards me and then back and then towards the degas bottle. And it sits back in there and it just turns down here. That's why you need to loosen that as it does turn. You can't just uh, not do that. So uh, here, let me jump up here on the truck a little bit and I will show you what else I have going on here. So the, um, I hope this is showing up. Here's your fuel line. I just take an adjustable wrench, pop that loose, and uh, T, there's these four bolts here, and all I do is I just press down on this hose to get to this bottom right one. So there's four of them, they're a T27, and I just loosen this. Now this is under spring tension, I don't know if this is showing up at all when I press on this. They're all loosened, it'll pop out. So you want to uh, just be careful when you release that. Now I put a rag down here to catch any fuel that comes out. So I am going to loosen the rest of them, take them off, and then I'm going to show you what all comes in this blue spring kit. And we'll go from there. Thank you guys. Okay guys, so um, the blue spring kit here, this is a mixture of new and old parts I got going on here. Here's some more of the old stuff. Uh, so here's the rest of the old stuff, I should say. So anyway, this is the old cover. There's nothing wrong with it. The part that fails is this gasket. Uh, it just, excuse me, it just compresses too much over time and uh it starts to leak now mine was not leaking and this is uh i mean that has never been taken off uh if you'd have to take this off for any reason i would replace this old gasket this one was just on the truck a couple days um and i'll go into my me uh, mess up here but these these uh o-rings here are for this fuel fitting the smaller one which in the new kit is green here's the new fuel the fuel fitting on the new thing or on the new cover for the regulator. The new uh, O-ring's green, and the other one's the same color, but that we can't see because it's compressed into the um, cover here. So, new gasket here. Uh, Diesel Tech Ron, recommend, uh, that's one of the videos I was watching. He even recommends putting Vaseline on this uh, for whatever reason. Uh, he does emphasize the uh, for some of these O-rings, I just use the diesel fuel as a lubricant to, uh, to get it in there to help make my seal, and uh, that seemed to be working fine. But um, you know, some techs do recommend putting some uh, form of grease on there. But uh, it comes with all new bolts, a new cup down here, just to show you comparison. Uh, they're not really different looking other than this one's obviously clean. This uh, piece, you won't use this in some years. Now I noticed when I took this off, this did not have an O-ring on it. This new one is to get an O-ring. And I think really all that is, is uh, just how they do it differently because there's, see if this shows up, a very slight difference here. This one looks like it came, I don't know how good this is showing up, try to really show this. This is the old one here. And if you can see, there's kind of like a lip, almost like there's another, it doesn't feel like a gasket. Maybe it's just really hardened, but uh, it, this, uh, this piece is extended, so you need to put something on there. 
So here's this O-ring. Now this is what I forgot. What I tried to do initially is I put this O-ring all the way down and that's not what you need to do. This O-ring only goes, sorry, this O-ring here only goes against this first seat to kind of extend that. So you don't need to make it too long. If you do this, there's a video online. I'd not get video of the noise mine was making, but you'll hear like a pumping sound, uh, like a loud, you'll think it's a loud fuel pump. Um, I'm not quite sure what it is uh, exactly, but um, this O-ring, if you don't put it on, you'll know it. Now, later years, you will actually, you won't even need this plastic piece. It'll just be these two will go together and go in there and this comes with your oat with an o-ring already or a seal already on it and last thing i want to show you old spring to new the new spring is on the left it's a little longer which will give you that increased pressure that we're looking for when you're putting it in you want to make sure that this spring lands right in the center valley there so just some considerations so I'm going to start getting this thing back together and uh, I'll catch up with you guys once I get the regulator back on and uh, then again after we get it put back together and first start up. Thanks guys. Okay guys, so just to go over what I just did, um, it was a pain in the butt pushing this regulator back on there with that O-ring, but it needs to go on there. So uh, what I did is I pushed it on. And tighten this top right one just enough to hold this in place and then I slowly started getting the other ones in and you don't want to crank one down the whole way kind of little at a time little at a time little at a time little at a time kind of star pattern it until you get a good fit right up against it and then snug them all down this is just I believe these are just a loot cast aluminum this is soft you can keep cranking on these even after they're tight, you know, be careful. You don't break a break one of those bolts off. You know, they're not overly big bolts. You they're not going to take a whole lot. So just be cautious as you're tightening it down before you give yourself another problem and have to go replace the whole regulator. If you're doing this job on a Sunday like I am, you're kind of out of luck because you're not finding one anywhere. So what I'm going to do next here, get my intercooler pipe back in place tighten up both connections and uh, start reassembling the air box and you know we're almost done this is a pretty quick job guys and after I get this in and uh, start getting some of the air box in I'll I'll come back and we'll touch base again okay guys we got it back together here uh, pretty simple job here for instance these are the tools I had uh, to use nothing crazy um, 11 millimeter Phillips head, flathead, 13 millimeter for the back of my intake here. Uh, that T27 uh, Torx bit, a pair of pliers and an adjustable wrench. Um, you know, my ratchet here. So uh, not, a, not a hard job, doesn't take a lot of tools to do. I just wanna go over the connections you need to make sure are all done. Uh, kinda go over everything here. So there's the intercooler pipe to the intercooler. You wanna make sure you retighten that. Up here, retighten this. Your hoses here and here. Also, the other side of the uh, degas bottle. Retighten your cap if you did it. Your bolts for your degas bottle. These four screws, the clamp around the filter to the pipe. Your mass airflow sensor. <clears throat> Uh, I took it apart here and down there, so I retightened those. Your fuel line fitting and all your Torx bits there. Uh, and that is it. There, well, I lie slightly. If you have this style SMB filter, there's normally another nut right here. Mine is missing. Uh, we'll let Josh explain that in a, in a future video about how what happened there, if he remembers. But uh, anyway... So that's the job, guys. I'm going to get it started up here in a minute to do a little uh, vlog of uh, if I can feel a before and after. So let's get the truck started up. 
and we'll go from there.